Hola, buenas tardes. So let, let us begin our scientific program uh, with the first plenary speaker. So for the last 29 years, or 28, this is the 29th year of the International Materials Research Conference. The conference has prided itself of bringing the best plenary speakers. And we have been honored to include uh, Nobel laureates, future Nobel laureates, and this year is no different. We have a, a very fine plenary speakers, and we begin our scientific program with uh, Professor Marie-Paul Pileni. Let me read a short bio of Marie-Paul. Uh, Marie-Paul graduated and did her scientific career at Sorbonne University. She, was, she has conducted outstanding and highly interdisciplinary research over her scientific career her combined expertise in colloidal science and in nanoscience have paved the way for several breakthroughs. Her most important discovery is the self-assembly of inorganic nanocrystals into 3D crystalline structures called colloidal crystals or supracrystals. Uh, there are many potential applications ranging from nanoengineering to cancer therapy. Her research has been at the frontier of physics, chemistry, biophysics, and most recently of biomedicine. She's a member of several academies and she has a lot, a long list of awards. Uh, just let me mention some. Uh, the Langmuir Prize of the American Chemical Society, the Doctorate Honoris Causa from Chalmers University, the Gay-Lussac Humboldt Prize from Germany, the Descartes Huygens Prize from the Royal Netherlands Academy, just to mention a few. Uh, besides, Marie Paul is a strict scientific and critic of bad science, but she's a very nice person. So make sure you take uh, advantage of her presence here, to especially the students. It's a very good opportunity. And uh, without further ado, I would like to welcome Marie Paul Pileni to Cancun. Thank you, Marie Paul. Thank you so much for this introduction. I am very, very pleased and honored to be here. Thank you, Mr. President. And I would like also to share Raoul, of course, and uh, all the committee who decide to invite me. Okay, today I will try to, to show you what, uh, let's say, what colloidal crystals are and what are the potentiality. I would like really to, to try to show you that these systems are really fantastic, and uh, we have a lot of things to do with them. Okay, so first, uh, where, where is the... Uh, um, so, we will first uh, look at some... Uh, for the look, uh, the uh, I, I decided to, to make two parts of the, of, the, of the talk. The first one, it will be just to show you some of the unexpected data we have got over these last few years, many years. And that is my last baby, and I really think this is a, a, has a lot of potentiality. So let's first to try to, to look at the self-assembly. So we have nanoparticle coat with uh, surfactant to keep the integrity of this particle. When the size distribution is low enough, you, they can self-assemble and they can create either film or shape uh, uh, crystals. We are, uh, which could have uh, the crystalline structure, compact crystalline structure such as FCC, BCC, HCP, supracrystals. So we call them this, this beast supracrystals and uh, you have a lot of, the, to create this type of material you, you have a lot of uh, 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 parameter, nano size, etc. You, you have to control. So let's first look at the unexpected property. I will try to show you that uh, uh, the, we will have some analogy between atomic crystals and uh, supracrystals. When you look at nanoparticles, they are si single domain nanoparticles. Here you have a cubic a cuboctahedron. But now when you do the same, we use this beast and self-assemble it, 
You can create this cuboctahedron, but of course at a different scale. And in nature, we did not invent anything. Nature will work for us. You have the fluorine, which has the same structure. Similarly, here if you have an icosahedron, you can make a supracrystal icosahedron, and you have the pyrite. Uh, many years ago, we decided to make, a, we, 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 by accident, we found the uh, nanodisc, a nanodisc, and we look at, we try to dis describe the mechanism of, this forma of the formation of nanodisc, and the only possibility we found out is uh, to have a truncated uh, uh, tetrahedron and have a, a association, the one-one phase together and the surface reconstruction. And uh, many years, a few years later, with the nanoparticles, we found out that we have this, uh, similar, this uh, nano disk, this uh, supra disk of nanoparticles. And uh, in, the, in the bunch of the materials, the shape we found, we got this one. Imagine it looked like the intermediate we, we assumed uh, several years ago. But we did not create anything. La uh, nature did before everything, every, uh, before us. Here you can find the truncated the tetrahedron, and you can find this intermediate in nature. So uh, again, uh, you have crystal, atomic crystals, uh, supra crystals uh, in the same uh, uh, condition. You have, uh, we, you know, when you have a bulk material, if you make a cut lateral cut, you can create uh, 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 vicinal surfaces. And uh, uh, for those who work on vicinal surfaces, these surfaces are totally unstable. You have to work under vacuum, etc. cetera. Uh, in our case, we did, uh, we look at, uh, we use a, a mixture of cobalt and, and gold particles, two, two type of different particles, and we have been able to create a let's say, a film, a bed of cobalt, in which on the bed you have the, the gold, uh, 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 this uh, beast, uh, this supra crystals. And in fact, the surface is a vicinal surface and with a long range order. And this vicinal surface, very strangely, are very, very stable. You can wash it and extract it. And uh, so, uh, we also uh, use binary system, and we found out that, uh, you know, um, many years ago we we have a, a Nobel Prize on uh, uh, on uh, quasi crystals were given to uh, one uh, one guy I forget his name right now, and uh, and uh, uh, if you use a, a binary system, uh, large and small particles, and try to self assemble. We found out that uh, when you, uh, you change the coating agent, just the chain length, you can get quasi-crystals, and you have the diffraction, the typical diffraction of quasi-crystals, but now we have a sub quasi crystals quasi-supra-crystals. And also when you change, when you, if you use cobalt particles, when you change the, the nanocrystallinity and you make, you transfer from, from amorphous to HCP cobalt particles, you make a fer ferromagnetic material and you can also get uh, a vicinal surface, uh, sorry, uh, quasi-crystals. So you can see that, uh, uh, voila. So this is uh, similar to, to what we get with atom. And also here we did this in collaboration with Julius Cheruto, 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 Cherulo. And Julio, uh, so we deposit on the substrate uh, a supra crystal, but a very, very thin one. If you use a thick one, you are dead. It does not exist. So you excite it, and then you, you get the, you found some uh, long, uh, long delay time, some vibration. And uh, uh, we found out that, in fact, you have to excite, you excite the, the substrate, and then you get a longitudinal uh, coherence length. Uh, uh, propagation, longitudinal pro pro propagation. As uh, Giulio uh, Cerullo uh, obtained the same experiments when he used a, a thin crystal, atomic crystals deposit on the surface. Uh, and, and we will end this uh, unexpected experiment. This was done 
century ago, in 2005. We measure, uh, we took the same amount of silver particles, deposit either, and make either a chrysos or uh, amorphous aggregate as assembly. And we compare by low Raman scattering, uh, uh, low frequency Raman scattering, we compare the two, abs uh, the two spectra. And you can see here that with the uh, supra crystals, the bandwidth is very thin compared to the uh, amorphous aggregate. And uh, this was done in collaboration with uh, uh, Eugène Duval. And Eugène Duval was one the, of the first guy who found out that when you excite a nanoparticle, the particle breathes currently. And he used the same model for, for, uh, for nanoparticles. And we conclude that we have, we have got uh, uh, coerced uh, vibration of nanoparticle inside the supracrystals. And more recently with Cerullo and De, De La Valle, we found out uh, with gold aggregate, we found out that you have an oscillation, a mechanical oscillation. And uh, we, uh, this mechanical oscillation is, uh, 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 the period is around 300 picosecond. And this comes very nicely with uh, the calculated uh, period, if we take into account the size of the aggregate and the, uh, the speed of sound we determined with uh, the previous uh, experiments on the, uh, on the experiments I show you on the longitudinal oscillation. So, and now we end with uh, STM, STS experiments. Usually you know that STM, better than me, uh, when you have too thick uh, material, you cannot uh, uh, image uh, by STM, STS, STM. Uh, in this case, but we can it, we can do it. And uh, you use, uh, we use a uh, 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 supracrystal having almost five micrometer thickness. And uh, with such supracrystal, we can see, this is the surface uh, we observe by uh, SEM, and this is STM. You can see a very nice uh, 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 in similar image. And when you do the, conducti the conductance, you measure the conductance, you see the conductance uh, is quite homogeneous. You, are, you go from 25 picosiemens to uh, 60 picosiemens. It's quite homogeneous. But if you look at the conductant on one given position, you can see that uh, more or less is homogeneous, but you can see from one measure to the other that you still uh, you have some uh, oscillation, and this has to be related to the Coulomb blockade we observe for isolated particles. And here you can see that we get a collective property of, uh, on the transport property, but also we get the fingerprint of each particle sit using at the building block. So we saw that uh, I try to, I hope I convince you that we have some unexpected property. Here the atoms are replaced by nanoparticles, nanocrystals, and the atomic bond are replaced by carbon atom. We found that we can control the shape of the particle. We found vicinal surface, quasi supracrystals, vibrational coherence of the nanoparticles as atom in a nanocrystals. The coherence movement of nanocrystals in lattice out of the equilibrium. And the electronic property, you can image very thick supracrystals. And conductant bands is quite homogeneous, but we still have the fingerprint of the nanocrystals. So this, all this example, you can, we, many of the, this, these experiments, we don't, we still don't have the right explanation to how it works. We found out, but all is open to, to all the research in this area remain open. Now, I will try to show you now my light baby. So if you want to have all the experiments I showed you before are experiments done in dry system. So you deposit the part of the supracrystal in, on the substrate. And uh, if you want to do application, 
and more in energy release, you need to have water. And uh, so if you want to do, if you use nanoparticle, water-soluble nanoparticles, you have a lot of difficulty to get supracrystals. It's never stable, it's, uh, it's, it's a bunch of, uh, of problems. So we decided to use our supracrystal, hydrophobic supracrystals, and try to solubilize them in water. To do that, so we, we, we set up a cobalt gold cluster, we call it cluster, and co uh, we, we will use, I will show you, colloidosome and suprabol particles. So let's first try to, with cobalt and gold cluster structure. We will see fingerprint of the building block as before with uh, electronic property. We will see some meta, meta, meta material collective mode and the nano eater, which is, uh, in my opinion, is the most important data we have got in this area. Okay, so you have the particles, you self assemble them, you play with, to, to get the shapes of practices. And then you, you add uh, some biological uh, 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 organic uh, molecule. We add DPPC and we add the POG uh, 2000. And the, the particularity of this uh, type of material, organic material we add, the organic material used to, to keep the integrity of the nanoparticle as uh, Alkyl chain in C12, C18. The DPPC are, six, uh, are, are uh, long chain also, and the POG has one long chain, uh, no, two long chain, and a very, very long chain which is hydrophilic. So you coat the particles, the supracrystal with DPPC, and then you have the POG who make a bond from one, one part to the other and it makes a, a type of parachute. And so then the, part, the, the, the supracrystal can move. And here you have the supracrystal before treatment, and here after treatment. You can see that the treatment is uh, quite efficient. So by X small angle X-ray scattering, you can see here the, in red, the, the, uh, in blue, sorry, the, the, the diffraction of uh, uh, before treatment of the supracrystals. Yeah, after treatment, you have this double peak, and uh, which this one could be the vesicles, and to make sure, we did just a diffraction of a vesicle, hydrated vesicle, and we got this. So this seems to be the signature that we still, we, the vesicles are really uh, associated to the supracrystals. In this case, we, we, we work with cobalt particles. And you can see here that uh, you can see the organic uh, uh, matter surrounding the supracrystals. And here you can see that uh, you have still organic matter at the edge of the particles. Cobalt is highly oxidable. And when we start to do some magnetic, proper, some magnetic property, we did the FCSC curve. So we, we do the, did the, this uh, uh, magnetic property Almost because it was not, uh, we did not have the, the squid at home, so we have to go to next door, and next door is 20 kilometers, and 20 kilometers it takes time. Anyway, so uh, we did the experiments uh, two weeks after d doing the experiments. And, uh, up, up, up. and you can see that uh, the before and after treatment, you have exactly the same curve. Except here, here you can see that if you look carefully, you have here, uh, like, uh, after treatment, you have this, uh, this bomb at uh, around uh, 7K. And this is the signature of COO. Probably because you have, uh, COO is formed as soon as you have water, you have some particles at the edge of the supracrystal which make some layer of CO, and then this CO protect against magnetization. And it's why when you add a solution and add a magnet, you can see that the, the particle go to the, to the, to the 
close to the magnet. And uh, if you want to visualize this, you can see the particles after uh, applying a magnetic field, you can see the roads are running. And then if you change or, or the, the orientation of the magnet, you can see you change the orientation of. So we keep the, the integrity of cobalt nanoparticle of cobalt supracrystals in water, just probably due to the fact that we keep our, our uh, cobalt oxide, the cobalt oxide protect against the, the system. And uh, uh, so we did the same with gold particles. And uh, I will not tell you again the same story, but you can see that the same story with uh, the diffraction, which is slightly different, but it's just due to, because of material. And here you can see that because gold is, is, is not oxidable, you can see that you have layer by layer, the layer by layer of, uh, of the vesicles. So then uh, what we did, uh, of course, gold uh, 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 is, a, is a good candidate for plasmonic, uh, as you know. And, uh, here you have the supracrystal I already show you, and by controlling the, the nucleation and the, and the growth process, you can control the size of the supracrystals. And you can see here, it's better to see, you can see you have the, the spectra uh, is in, in fact two peaks. You have uh, one at around 530 and another one which change, which change with the size of the supracrystals. So by using the, uh, by treating all this system, we found out that we have only one peak around uh, 530 nanometer, which is uh, attribute to the localized surface, surface plasma, plasmonic, surface plasma, surface plasma resonance of the isolated particles. So again, you keep the fingerprints of the particles and this is very important. If we keep the same fingerprint, everything which has been done with one part, few particles, few, a series of nanoparticles will be useful, can be used here. And you will lose all the, prob the problem concerning the, uh, the diffusion and uh, the, uh, the toxicity of the nanoparticles. So we have these fingerprints, and then you have this collective mode, which linearly change with the size of the, part of the aggregate. So we use this system with uh, Giulio Cerullo and uh, Del Valle to do some pump probe measurements. And uh, here you can see at very short time, you have the electron phonon uh, uh, response, which is classical. But then you can see here you have, at longer time, you have an absorption. You have something here. Uh, in fact, so if you look at two scales here, you have at short time scale, you have the electron phonon sc scattering of gold, which is normal. And at longer scale, usually you don't have anything. And at longer scale here, you found an increase. So uh, they, they set up a, a model from which the pump probe is, uh, uh, is absorbed by, by the metallic part, and then the probe absorption initiates a, ch a chain of energy transfer having different energy degree of freedom coupled together. So from this uh, model they get, uh, we have been able to uh, you can see the experiments and the, the simulation are in a good agreement. And uh, you still have the fingerprint of the isolated particles. And here you have, a, you have a, it's, uh, the model fit quite well with this assumption. So the death penetration of light is higher in supracrystal than, uh, than for the uh, same particle in spheres. In fact, we got a very nice photothermic thermal property of this system. And you will see, I will show you later, this is, seems to be a universal nano -eaters. Okay, so then now we, we leave uh, gold, uh, 
uh, silver particles, we will go to ferrite particles. So ferrite particles, they are 10 nanometer, and we can create uh, either colloidosome, which is a shell of particles, or a supraball, which is an FCC, you will see uh, spherical particles. We will see the nanomechanical properties, the internalization in tumor cells, and uh, the uh, hyperthermia. So the uh, ferrite particles, so when you use this, uh, you, you, you play with this ferrite, you can make a shell. If I can have the, the video, please. You can see this empty shell. You, are really, you have two or three layers, uh, but it's empty shell. Thank you. And uh, you can see that uh, by cryofracture, uh, you can see it quite seems to be uh, very flexible. And this, uh, the, the shape of the, the, the system, the topography, is confirmed. And here you can see the step of here, in this case, it's two, two layers uh, of uh, the, you have two layers. The supra ball is only one ball full of FCC particle, but spherical. And you have here some steps, and you can see here also the steps. But what is important is to look at the, the deformation of this beast and the adhesion. You can see the colloidosome, the shell, has a strong adhesion at the edge and strong deformation at the edge. At the opposite, the supra ball, they, they, they are, don't have anything uh, very different. Furthermore, the elastic modulus is very low for colloidosome. We can understand it's a shell, and uh, but it's very uh, is is la uh, larger for the co uh, for the supra ball, but they still are very small compared to supra crystal deposit on the substrate. So, in collaboration with Rao, we th but COVID has been very bad with us because we have not been able to really work, but we start to work on that. We found out that the, the nanoparticle, the ferrite, uh, has an absorption spectra what is well known. But when you do the same, you self-assemble this system, you, you have a drop on the absorption, a drastic drop on the absorption. Now, if you add in the solution some ethanol, wait a little bit because it takes some time, you recover the absorption here. So it's really due to the self-assembly. And we try, we start to work uh, just a few, few, few time ago on that. And uh, I hope we will solve this problem. He will solve this problem. And uh, so uh, concerning if you do probe pro pro measurements, I, sh I show you with a nano eater, you, uh, you can see that with supra ball, we still have the fingerprint of the isolated, but you still have also the long time. And we also found with colloidosome, but the effect, of course, is less because there is not enough material. And this is just to remind you what we got with uh, the, the, the gold. So now it's time to go for a little more biology. And so we took a, a, a cancer cell, and we, what we did is the following. We took the particle, dispersed particle in water, and we took the same particles, except we changed the coating agent because to make uh, hydrophobic particles, and to be able to make the colloidosome. So we, so but the size, the synthesis is the same, then we, ch we play to change the coating agent. The size is the same. And then here you have the particle dispersing water, and here you have the colloidosome, hydrophobic particle, self-assembled in colloidosome and dispersing water, and that's a superable hydrophobic particle, self-assembled uh, self and dispersing water. And we will compare the two, the three. So when you use dispersed particles, you can see after one day incubation, you can see the particles are really in cell, internalized. 
When you do the same experiments with the colloidosome, you can see you have internalization, but if you look at carefully the scale, here we are in the 100 nanometer scale, here we are more than 200 nanometer scale, we have a huge change in the structure, but the system remain, remain self-assembled. And when you do the, the supra ball, but you, you keep more or less the same size, a smaller increase, and they are self, self they are, uh, so, they, so this show that we have been able, and I think it's the first example in literature, we have been able to self-assemble nanoparticle in cell, and, uh, and then if we self-assemble the nanoparticle in cell, we can keep, uh, have all the property, collective property of the assembly. And why did we got this? We got, why did we got this? I think it's due to the fact that we use hydrophobic particles. When you use hydrophobic particles, the particles came, the interaction between the membrane of the cell and the, and the, the chain length. And then when the particles are in the cells, they tend to self-assemble with the same coating agent and not with the other uh, uh, biological ma material. So now we have, a, we have a deal. And we need to have more information and more proof that we have the self-assembly because this is not enough. So we did some small angular X-ray scattering. And what we did, we extract the, diff, the, the scatter of the cell. And here you have the, the voila, uh, you have the, and we, you, you, we take the, the structure factor, we measure, we deduce the structure factor who can give you the assembly, the way the particle are, are self-assembled. And you can see here, the, if you, the structure factor at various uh, Q angle, you can see the slope is 1.7. And that 1.7 is a signature of a fractal uh, distribution, distribution. At the opposite, with colloidosome and suprabol, we have 2.3 and 2.9. That is a signature also to compact uh, assembly. And so we have a high packing, uh, the, the system, the particles are packed. And, uh, you have to see here that we have, with uh, the colloidosome and the suprabol, we have a, a bump here, and that seems to be the signature of other type of interaction, but we don't have any, we can uh, assume it could be some clusters, but it's not very clear why do we have this, uh, this, uh, this bump, which does not exist with, uh, with the particle, the, the, so now we know that the particles are highly packed in the cell. And then uh, we ask ourselves, do we have, uh, do the amount of ferrite uh, uh, in cell increase or remain the same? Here, uh, when you look at the different of the contrast, you already know that uh, it's, <laughs> we start with the same amount of iron in those the different uh, experiments. And you can see here, that when you have colloidosome of suprabol, you have a huge increase in, in the amount of iron uptake in lysosome uh, compared to uh, the dispersed particles. You, here you can see the, uh, in both cases, uh, one day, eight, day, eight days incubation time, you have, so you have one self-assemble of the particle. Furthermore, you increase the amount of iron you can increase. Now, where, when you see this, this beast, you, you f it feels that uh, it goes, the particle going, or the ion go in one direction. So we, we assume that uh, we will look at what's happened in, uh, along the 100 uh, distance between the lysosome membrane and uh, in the, in the, uh, along, along the lysosome membrane in the thickness of 100. And you found here, 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 you can see that the amount of ferrite sit, sitting 
in the region of the lysosome membrane is huge compared to the amount of ferrite uh, for obtained with nanoparticles. And you can see here for by a factor of 10. Huh? Uh, it decreases it decrease, uh, after AD incubation, but it's still larger than uh, the dispersed particles. So, and this is important because you know that if you want to kill uh, something in the cells, the problem is the membrane, which is very s solid. If you have the particle close to the membrane, you can, you can uh, have some less, less problem to, kill, to break the membrane. So here you, we look at the influence of the magnetic field. We apply one Tesla magnetic field uh, during four hours uh, of uh, uh, dispersed and we don't see anything. At the opposite with colloidosome and uh, suprabol, you can see the dark uh, road. Uh, and, uh, uh, if, uh, and you have here, you can see the cell, you have enter and uh, enter intra and extra uh, cellular uh, uptake. So you have, this is valid for both of this system, but it seems that supraboles are more intracellular system. Now, now, of course, the question is, do, does this system uh, act, uh, uh, could react uh, in front of magnetic field? Uh, so we, we did, uh, we apply a magnetic field and we change the orientation of the magnetic field. And you can see that the change is not homogeneous. You have some, uh, some uh, assembly which change uh, slower than the other and, uh, and is worse here. And this is probably due to the, fa the fact that uh, the assembly intracellular are more difficult to to move that extracellular. Voilà. Alors, now I come back to you because I, I read your paper and the, your paper is so nice. I hope we will be able to do something also. Uh, the hyperthermia, we will look at the hyperthermia in cells. And uh, so what we did is we take the cell and we take the particles and uh, 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 shine a laser uh, for a few minutes, and then uh, let the system incubate it for four hours. If you don't incubate it, you don't have anything, but you need to incubate. And you, here, the green and the, and the uh, purple uh, image uh, uh, point are the kill, uh, correspond to the kill, uh, the, the cell were actually killed. And uh, you can see you have, uh, Compared to the ferrite themselves, you can see you, you kill more particles with, co, uh, with uh, colloidosome and suprabol than uh, with, uh, when you use ferrite nanocrystals. But now, if you do a monolayer of cells and incubate it and, uh, during one day and then shine the laser, you can see a huge amount of kill cells for colloidosome and suprabol compared to this one. So it works. So an, an, our nano eater works quite well in cells. It kills quite well. And uh, here we end with, uh, we took a tendent of veal and we deposit the colloidosome. You can see the colloidosome here. And then we irradiate it 10 minutes. And you see the veal, the tendon, is broken, you make a hole. And you take the, uh, the, the suprabol, yeah, it's difficult to find the suprabol, but here you can see the hole. So it seems to be a general phenomena, the, the nano eater work well. So just to conclude, uh, with this uh, hybrid uh, hydro, hydrophobic system, we keep the integrity of this cluster for several months. Uh, for cobalt clusters, you get cobalt oxide, who protects against oxidation and uh, uh, permit to uh, uh, keep the magnetic properties, integrity, and so to 
uh, be able to manipulate. For gold, we got two absorption, one collective mode, which is uh, linearly dependent of the size of the assembly, and the fingerprint of the big building block. In fact, we develop a new concept to uh, internalize, to use to self-assemble the particles. So the particle remains self-assembled. The long-range cluster interaction inside the cell, we don't know exactly what type. Uh, an increase of the uptake by a factor of 10, uh, mainly localized at the lysosome membrane. A magnetic manipulation and high hyperthermia property. So I did not show you this one, which is a, a mixture of ferrite and gold, but uh, 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 the nano eater has a very universal feature with a different type of material. This is ferrite and gold. Huh? And, uh, but what is funny is the nano eater, you get the nano eater only if you get the system dispersed in water. We never get this in dry system. And we have the fingerprint of the mechanical oscillation and uh, the fingerprint of the nanoparticles. And I would like to end to this conclusion. If I have one message to send to you, this system are fantastic. We have plenty of work to do and plenty of our potential applications. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I am sorry that all this work has been done in collaboration with these people, and I want really to thank them all. Thank you. Now the floor is open for questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Can I have a microphone, please? Questions, who wants to begin? One free drink for every question. <laughs> there was a question, yes. So for the hybrid uh, cobalt, copper, you tried to, s the synthesis from the, co the cobalt it was in micellar, reverse micellar, Synthesis, and uh, you try to go from MCC did. to FCP uh, cobalt. Alors, uh, what we did, yeah, more or less, we do the, the, the cobalt we did in, in reverse myself, and then we code the system, and to get the HCP cobalt, we anneal the system, but it works with others. But the, the experiments I show you is uh, on the. Uh, um, who, who, who we made a vicinal surface that was done in reverse by sets, yes. Thank you very much. But the transition, uh, as soon as reverse my sets give, give a more first material. So as soon as you uh, anneal it, you get uh, the, the HCP. Uh, there's another question. <laughs> Hello. Uh, for the part that uh, you mix the nano crystal, the supracrystal with the polymer, who is no, no. Uh, with the poly PAG there with supracrystal? No, what, no, what we did, uh, we coat first the particle with surfactant, alkyl chain. Oh, okay. okay. Then uh, the trick is you add a bad solvent in the, you have the colloidal solution, which is optically clear, uh, voila. Then you add a bad solvent, but the bad solvent depends on the material you use. So if I remember well, uh, with uh, ethan, with uh, gold is isopropanol, and the other one I think is uh, methanol, but not sure. You add a bad solvent, then you change the interaction between the particles. And then you create this shape particles. Okay, then you have, your, so since you have your shape, the precipitate, you collect the precipitation, and then you put the precipitate in a, another 
vessel and add DPPC and POGC. First, you add DPPC, you shake, and then you have POG, whatever, and you shake, and then you, uh, you, uh, that is this water. So when you add the hydrophobic system and you add water with DPPC and uh, POGC, well, and then you shake, and then the, you disperse, you, you succeed to disperse the system. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, I was wondering what's the effect of the length of the alkyl chain when assembling the molecule? I mean, the longer the better, or it's better with short ones? Uh, for, for what? For the for uh, assembling the water soluble system? Yes. You have to have the chain as close as the chain lengths of DPPC and POGC, P, P, D, whatever. And uh, P, whatever, is 18, so we took 18. Okay. And I think T DPPC is 16, but it's closed. But it has to be long. Okay, and does the uh, ramifications of the molecule affect how does the crystal ensemble? Uh, sorry, could you repeat it? I, uh, I mean, if you take a chain that size, but with ramifications, does it help or does it worsen the effect? I don't know. We, we did like this. Ah, uh, you, you. We did not check the other system. It's quite complicated to do it. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's easier to tell you that to do it. <laughs> Thank you. The part that uh, you mentioned, the mechanical vibration, the, the period of mechanical, if you calculate using like a classical elastic model, you get the same number? I mean, would you say that your supracrystal yeah, you obeys uh, if continuous? If you take the period, huh? 2PD is the diameter of your beast div divided by uh, the uh, speed of sound. You get that. You get, but the speed of sound, the problem, the speed of sound, it's, uh, we measure by, through the elongative uh, propagation wave, and the speed of sound in the supracrystal is very low compared to the speed of sound in, uh, of the mat bulk material. So th that's, uh, we have to take the speed of sound, measure, uh, right, directly measure with four supracrystals. Okay. And this speed of sound and supracrystal depend on the temperature which is not usual in normal crystals. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and about the thermal, uh, ther uh, the photothermal effect, how stable are the uh, supravolts to heating? Uh, the th uh, photothermal effect, when you start heating the, 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 uh, the crystal, but how stable is the crystal? Ah, uh, it's stable for, uh, for years. We have this, uh, the, the colloidosome and the, the suprabol, we have them for almost three years. And we can use, we, we have some experiments running now in Italy with uh, Giulio, and we, did, we check uh, last July uh, in Paris, not change. No, no, that's, that's, that's very important because we are safe on that. We can use a... Uh, any uh, other questions? For the help? Ah, there's another question. Hello. Um, I have some questions of, of Huba application. So the first one asked by Refugio Bernardo Garcia Reyes. Have you ever tried to modify surface charge of um, iron oxide with negative compounds instead of dopamine, a positive uh, charge molecule? No, we did not change, but what we measure with the zeta potential, and the zeta potential is the same for all. That's, it. That's the only things we know. Okay, thank you. And another question of Hugh application. 
Hi, can colloidal crystal be applying some energy store area? Asked by Suhei Castellanos. Why? Can colloidal, can colloidal crystal be applied in some energy store area? Oh, I think this can be applied for, in the, I will dream to do solar energy with that. Uh, I, uh, I don't have the possibility, but I would dream to do it. Yes, I think there is a lot of, uh, a lot of potentiality on that. Thank you. Uh, no, this only. Thank you very much for your talk. I have a naive question. Oh, uh, that's the worst one. <laughs> I understand that the main interest of using gold is because of the uh, uh, plasmonic uh, properties. Have you tried uh, uh, gold alloys uh, instead of, of pure gold? Alors, for the Super Bowl, we, can do, we cannot do uh, Gold, because the gold is too heavy and it's full. We have not been able to disperse it. But what we, what we did, we, we made uh, eggs. The, the shell is a ferrite, and inside is a cluster of gold, is a gold uh, supra crystals. But we don't have yet the, the data. Next year, I will come as a normal speaker and we'll give you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Do we have a way of knowing if there are more questions from the people uh, on the web or no? And well, no more questions, so we can close the session. Well, before we close, uh, let us give us a small diploma for your nice work ah, on behalf thank of you. the Mexican Material Research thank Society. Thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. Baby, very thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.